So this video is going to talk about all the different equations that are required for the energy topic of dynamics. So the first thing is total energy, and this is going to be made up of three different parts for our um, purposes. So E, total energy, is going to be made up of kinetic, potential energy due to gravity, and potential energy due to springs as well. All right. So starting off with kinetic energy, we can work out how much kinetic energy we have at a certain point of time um, using the equation that it's equal to a half mv squared. All right. So m here is the mass of the object in question, and v is the velocity it's traveling at in meters per second. So kinetic energy is energy associated with motion. If you don't have a velocity, it means you're not moving, you're not going to have any kinetic energy. So the next term is gravitational potential energy. Alright, and this type of energy um, is um, associated with you having a height above a certain um, reference point. So if, for example, I hold a pen above a table um, and then I drop it, its gravitational potential energy is converted gradually into the kinetic energy, the energy of motion. So gravitational potential energy can be calculated as mgh. So again, m is your mass. G is gravity, so 9.8 meters per second squared, and H is your height. Okay. So you need to remember that this height is always relative to a reference point. Okay, so you can choose that reference point, whether it be ground level or somewhere else. Um, but yeah, again, it's always relative to that um, reference point because it's where you measure your height from. So the last term is spring energy. Okay, and it's the potential energy stored within that spring. So you can calculate this as a half kx squared, and we're always going to have um, linear springs. So this is the energy stored in like a, a linear spring or a spring where the force is equal to kx. Okay. So in this equation, k is the spring constant, and x is the deflection of that spring. So whether it's been contracted or extended, you'll have an x value there. So that's how we can calculate the total energy we have at any particular point. Um, in all of our questions, it's only going to be kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and spring energy coming into it. So the next topic is the work energy equation. And this equation can be written as the change in energy is equal to the work applied minus the work lost. So the change in energy um, is going to be from one point to another, so initial position of your system to the final position of your system. And I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. The work applied is going to be any extra energy that's um, applied to the system from like an external source, so an extra force or something like that. Okay, and work lost is the opposite of that. Um, it's typically going to be any energy that you lose to friction or drag um, within your system. So I'll put in brackets friction and drag. 
So in both of these cases, um, you can typically calculate the amount of work that you have as being equal to the force multiplied by the distance over which it is applied. Okay. So in the case of a frictional loss, um, you would use the frictional force in here, which would be mu times the normal force. And then you just need to multiply it by how far that frictional force acts. All right. Similarly, if you're looking at the work applied, you might have an external force um, that you have acting. And again, you just need to take that force and multiply it by how far um, over which it acts. And that will put it into energy units. Um, and obviously then it can be put into this work energy equation. All right, so the only other thing um, to talk about is this change in energy um, term. And there's two different ways you can think about it. Oops. So one of the ways is to think about it as the final energy in your system minus the initial energy in your system. And the other way is to think about it as the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy due to gravity plus the change in potential energy within the spring. All right. And these are completely equal. It's just um, a matter of a, which order you go about calculating your terms in. So if you go with this first method where you're looking at the difference between your initial and final states, um, in this first term here, the final, you will calculate what the final kinetic is, the final potential energy due to gravity is, and the final spring energy is, and put it all in here. In this term, you work out the initial um, kinetic, initial potential due to gravity, and initial spring. Go in here, and then you find the difference between them. In this other method, where you're looking at each um, type individually, you'll find the final kinetic minus the initial in here, the final gravitational potential minus the initial gravitational potential in here, and the final spring energy minus the initial spring energy in here. So they work out to be exactly the same, it's just which order you calculate each of the different terms in. All right. So the very last thing to talk about is how all of this relates to power. So if I just scroll up, we know that power, by definition, is the derivative of energy with respect to time. All right. So if we want, we can substitute out the energy, the total energy E, and replace it with all the different parts that we said it was equal to. Okay. So again, using your derivative rules, if you want, you can um, multiply the bracket out and have each derivative applied to each term individually. So what I mean by that is we're going to have the derivative of kinetic energy with respect to time plus the derivative of potential energy due to gravity with respect to time plus the derivative of potential energy in the spring with respect to time. And if you do it this way, you can then start to think about how kinetic energy might be changing with time, how potential energy due to gravity might be changing with time, and how that spring energy might be changing with time. And often these questions you'll be able to get rid of at least one of them um, because it's going to be equal to zero. So that's all the equations that you should need for this topic. Um, I'll see you in the example videos.